Welcome back everybody. As you can see, we have the engine back out in front of the crawler here. I am waiting on a wrench for the track tensioner, so we are going to dive into stripping the engine down. And I know there's been quite a few people that have been anxiously waiting this, so let's get right into it. Okay guys, over here on the right side of the engine, we have our oil fill and then our oil filter assembly. We're going to get those out of the way uh, and then we will pull these covers for the cam lifters. We'll get this oil line out of the way. So actually, just I'm going to start at the top here and get this uh, old temperature cable out of the way. This ran up to a port kind of up by the radiator. That's where they pulled water temperature from. So we'll keep the clamps, but the cable is pretty much fried. So next up, I want to pull this oil line off here. If you look here, this line has actually been twisted at one time, which is not the end of the world. Um, it is just an oil feed line, but it almost feels like it's collapsed. I, don't really think there's much flow going on there anymore, but we'll see what happens when we take this off. Well, surprisingly, it's not twisting that line anymore. We'll work it back and forth here. Let it get some of that rust and that cleaned out of there. I can see as I'm backing this off here, I'm actually flexing the straight part of this line. Instead of just this nut coming off, it's actually pushing the whole line back with it. So I think I'm going to loosen this bottom one here. Just give it a little more flexibility on coming apart. Well, this is exactly what I thought the top part of the line was going to do. If you look, when I twist it, it just wants to twist that line along with it. The good news is it did start moving up in here once we started doing that. Okay, so just struggle with me here. This line, I can't get the top to twist because it runs into this part here that 90 does, but I do have the top of it off. But if I come down here and try we might end up pulling this whole base, but I was gonna see what it would take to get the actual oil fill out. But you can't take the oil fill out because there's a bolt that would run right into this line. So I'm thinking the best route now is to just pull it here. That way we can save that line, at least have a rough reference of what it looked like for when we go back together, we can make a new one. Pull a dipstick out here. And just because the dipstick is out, I'm not sure if I showed this in the walk around or not, but it does have oil in it. It doesn't look milky, it doesn't look like it's had moisture in it. It actually looks fairly decent. Okay, so with that out of the way, that line out, I think we can get this bolt out now. And then there's one hiding up top, basically straight back from here. You guys can't see it. And I know a lot of these bolts are probably hard to see. Everything kind of blends together. Uh, it's, it's all rust. There's not a whole lot of yellow paint left. Start with the easy one here. And the top one is a wrench only. All right, next up we're gonna do the oil canister. And I know I put the dipstick back in here, but they had this nice little homemade chain so that you'd never lose the dipstick. And that is tied around the top of the oil filter. So we're gonna see if there's any bolts I'm missing here. 
under all this grease. And of course there is. So what I'm seeing here is one, two, three, and four. And those are all studs, so we'll just pull them nuts off. I believe we can walk that whole thing off of there then. Well, we found it. We found water. This is oil. This is water. Hopefully it wasn't enough to hurt anything. Normally on these bolts, or bolts like this, I would like to use a line wrench to get all the way around there. Uh, I don't have my line wrenches here, so we're going to try just a normal wrench. If they give me any trouble, we'll quit before we round them off. Oh, they're coming nice and easy. That's good. Okay, they're all broke loose. I feel better. So this is what I meant. They don't have a full height head on them. They're kind of like a jam nut. They only have probably half of the height of a typical bolt. But they're so covered in oil they came out very well. Okay guys, with all of the bolts finally out, I did have to pull this bottom bolt to get that bolt out. Um, I'm going to pull just this tin cover. It looks like it just may contact the bottom there. So I'm just gonna pull them top two. We've had that cover off before, I know, in the walk around. So we'll pull that back off and then we should be able to slide this entire oil pipe out of here. So being that this rod is froze and all these pins along with it, I think what I'm going to end up doing is pulling all the perimeter bolts out of both of them and pulling them as if they were one complete unit. Uh, what that'll let me do is get this up on the bench and we can dissect these pins, maybe put a little heat to them, see if we can get this stuff moving. Um, for now, let's just get it out of the way. So I tried pulling these covers off and they would not move at all. So I just went and looked in the book, made sure I wasn't missing anything before I got too carried away here. And what they want is they want you to drive these dowels in to the block. Uh, it says in the manual, once those are driven in and you have these covers removed, you'll be able to drive them all the way through and then reinstall them. So we're gonna drive them in quick. Okay, with all four of those driven in, so one down here, one up here, and the same thing on the other side. See if they want to move now. And that did the trick. That's what they were hung up on. So let's get these out of the way. So 
So this is cylinder number one we're looking at and the camshaft there. Everything looks fairly good there. But when we get back to number two, cam looks all right. I can see that crank is a little rusty. That may clean up. Three looks just like number one. Everything looks pretty good. And then we get to number four. I am hoping that rust will clean up on that cam. I don't know how hard it'll be to find a cam for an engine like this, but I'm really hoping we can save that. Back at cylinder number one lifters. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. No major galling or scratching all the way back through. But then we get to number four. We'll have to see how that cleans up. All right, guys. I'm still unsure what to think about that cam and that lifter there. Like I said, it may clean up, it may be usable. Um, I'm not sure if you can put lifters on a valve grinder or not. Uh, I do have an old valve grinder. It's an old Sioux valve grinder. I, I've never honestly used it, but maybe we'll have to learn. I have some hardware to clean up from tonight yet and some parts to organize, but I thank everyone for watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe and follow along. We'll continue tearing this down because I'm still waiting on a wrench for those tracks, but we'll get back to them, don't worry. I do have just a little bit of bonus footage here. I'm not guaranteeing it'll work, but I made it at work. Cut it out on a plasma table. We'll put a pipe on this end. I did, I did make these a little small, so I still have to mill the flats in there yet. More on that soon. The points just go on. Perfect.